Hello YouTube! Russia has a lot of intelligent people, very capable people. The problem is that through the centuries Russia has not had too many intelligent governments. And the end result is very sad. For example, look at this story. In 1959, Colonel Anatoly Kitov sent a scientific and technical proposal to the Soviet leader, Nikita Khrushchev, a project to create a prototype of the modern Internet. If this idea had been implemented, the Internet would have appeared in the USSR 10 years earlier than in the United States. It all, it all started in 1951, when a young Anatoly Kitov read the works of the American scientist Norbert Wiener and made a conclusion for himself that electronic computers in the future will play a huge role in human life. And this is even though at the time many people considered the computer nothing more than a very ordinary calculator, which except to perform mathematical calculations is no good for anything else. In 1952, Kitov defended the very first dissertation in the Soviet Union on programming the movement of military missiles, and in 1954, under his leadership, the first computer center of the Ministry of Defense was created in the USSR. In 1959, Anatoly Kitov put forward a proposal to organize a single public system of computing centers so that most computers were connected to each other. However, the idea of creating an all-union network seemed out of the ordinary at the time. Kitov sincerely believed that by collecting the necessary data from all corners of the country, it would be possible to form a unique system for managing the economy. Well, Nikita Khrushchev was skeptical of the innovator's calculations. But Kitov did not come down and soon presented a new project on the same topic, called Red Book, to Nikita Sergeyevich's supreme decision capabilities. A special commission was called to discuss Kitov's proposal. In those years, computers were already used for the defense of the country, but to replace the unquestionable authority of the Communist Party officials with electronic brains, this of course was unthinkable. The project was rejected. Kitov himself was expelled from the Communist Party and dismissed from his job with the words without the subsequent right to hold senior positions. That's how they treated him. Surprisingly, the colonel did not come down. We have a saying, Russians do not give up. He continued his research, wrote books, and even defended his doctoral dissertation. Like any genius, Kitov soon found followers. One of them was academician Viktor Glushkov. It was he who, at the beginning of the 1960s, began work on the OGAS state-wide automated system project. For obvious reasons, Glushkov First of all, advocated the need to supply electronic machines to all enterprises of the Union, Soviet Union, and to some extent he even managed to do something in this direction. However, the very idea of OGAS again did not elicit enthusiastic responses. For 12 long years, Viktor Glushkov tried to reach top Soviet officials, and in 1982 he passed away. Ten years after Anatoly Kita first approached Nikita Khrushchev, in 1969, the ARPANET system, the progenitor of the modern computer network, was launched in the United States. The Advanced Research Projects Agency network was the first wide area packet switching network with distributed control and one of the first networks to implement the TCP slash IP protocol suit. Both technologies became the technical foundation of the Internet. The ARPANET was established by the Advanced Research Projects Agency of the United States Department of Defense. Well, a young Russian programmer I discussed this bit of history with, he mentioned that, the, uh, and, you know, mentioned that 
the colonel in 1959 immediately offered the all union internet and what he said is that they didn't think of making a network for the ministry of defense or within the same academy of sciences making something more limited but active why would Kitov, a colonel, why does he need a small network uh, of the Ministry of Defense? And Glushkov, an academician in the Academy of Sciences, and why would not he make it inside the walls of the Academy? This was his take on it. Well, this young Russian programmer and many more like him do not understand Soviet realities. But it's better not to know those realities and not to live through the idiotic utopian monstrosities like the Soviet socialism that was imposed on my country by bayonets of the Red Army and false promises of the so-called progressive movements. As for the science being chained by ideology, well, look around you, make your own conclusions. So this is the story I wanted to present to you. It would have been interested to see the advance of the internet in the Soviet Union, but you know what, it was not impossible, because information was in their hands. They controlled it, and ultimately the Soviet communist system failed, and new countries came about. I just wanted to share this piece of history with you. Thank you. If you like my research, please support me. You can see the um, uh, descriptions of how to do it and links in the introduction to my videos. Thank you.